Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. In today's speech, I aim to bring to life a man who brought himself back to life multiple times and in the process became both more than a man and less than a man. His name was Voldemort. <laughs> so how many of you have heard of Voldemort? How many of you have heard of Harry Potter? <laughs> so for those of you who have never, who either don't know anything or don't care anything at all about Harry Potter, don't worry. All you need to know for the purposes of this speech is that Voldemort is the incredibly evil and cruel super wizard who's always trying to kill Harry Potter in every book or trying to kill anyone else who gets in his way as he strives for world domination. <clears throat> However, today we will be highlighting an aspect of his life that you made that was not in the movies. Did you know that Voldemort was a member of Toastmasters? <laughs> Indeed, he only be became Lord Voldemort after he achieved the Competent Leadership Award from Toastmasters. <laughs> Being a natural in the leadership track, he eventually became supreme leader of all of the evil wizards in Great Britain. <coughs> Which for you Toastmasters insiders, it's sort of like being District 36 governor. <laughs> <laughs> but, the role that really exemplified his distinctive leadership style, somewhat different from Nico's leadership style, as you'll see, was when he gave speech evaluations. Now, the rest of the speech, we will bring to life the, one of the speech evaluations he gave, and it will involve a little play acting. Lisa has agreed to agree to come up and play the role of the speech of the person who's just given the speech. And I will play the role of Voldemort. <laughs> to be more believable, I'll put on my evil wizard costume. <laughs> okay. We have a small budget for special effects. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? Uh, fellow Toastmasters, <clears throat> Death Eaters, and Lisa, <laughs> I am here to evaluate the speech of Lisa Ng, which was speech number 10 of the Competent Communicators Manual, the theme of which was Inspire Your Audience. The goal of this assignment is to provide inspiration and to uplift the audience. Lisa's speech was entitled, Why Good Will Always Triumph Over Evil. <laughs> really? For some reason, I failed to find that speech at all inspiring or uplifting. I suppose next time you'll be telling us that love conquers all, or some similar nonsense. As a reward for giving such a ridiculous speech, I really should just give you the teeth on fire curse. However, one thing I did like about your speech was your use of hand gestures. <laughs> I developed a keen appreciation of that aspect of speech making when, because once I was stuck in the body of a snake and it's hard to make good hand gestures when you're a snake. Yeah, those were, those were trying times for me. To fill my hours, I joined the Snakes and Pythons Toastmasters Club. <laughs> That's the only Toastmasters Club where they never applaud the speaker, <laughs> for obvious reasons. If we liked a speech, just like in a song, we would just shake, rattle, and roll. <laughs> When we hissed at the speaker, that, that's the ultimate compliment. 
Speaking of Paul, I once asked Peter Pettigrew to lend me a hand, but he just gave me the finger. <laughs> what a rat. <laughs> but in conclusion, Lisa, I look forward to hearing your next speech and maybe evaluating your next speech. And if you haven't improved your speaking by then, then I really will give you the Teton fire curse. <laughs> by the way, next time you're speaking, you can just tell the Toastmaster today that you want me to be your evaluator and they can adjust the schedule accordingly. And you can, might help to bring some cheesecake as well. <laughs> <laughs> it never hurts. <laughs> Yeah, much better than the Brussels sprout you brought that one time. <laughs> Speaking more generally, I continue to be amazed that so many people have this irrational fear of public speaking. I mean, what are they afraid of? Of being embarrassed or criticized? It's, I mean, it's no big deal. For instance, Lisa, I'm sure at times the tone of some of my remarks may have seemed a little harsh at times, but I think you'll agree that it was all in the spirit of constructive criticism and it will just help you improve in the future, right? <laughs> right. Some people are more sensitive, even touchy. Harry Potter, for instance. I'm sure some of you know that a while ago I I gave Harry Potter a very negative evaluation. <laughs> you could say I evaluated him with <laughs> extreme prejudice. And uh, the experience seems to have uh, scarred him for life. <laughs> and years later, he still hasn't forgiven me. Some people just don't know when to let things go. But in conclusion, fellow Toastmasters, now that you have seen <laughs> the power of Toastmasters and what it can do for you, how can you resist joining me in my quest, or I should say our quest for self-improvement? I joined Toastmasters in order to develop the skills I needed to take over the world, <laughs> and I'm almost there, <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster. <coughs>